Thank you, everybody, and good morning. It's good to uh, get to stand on this side of the stage sometimes, and I will do my best to be the best uh, to, to give something of substance for you this morning. But uh, I want to start with a quick story. When I was younger, when I was little, we would go to my grandma's house, right, as a lot of us do when we're younger. And um, my grandma had this hall, well, they still live there, but this long hallway that would then lead into the living room. And at the end of the hallway was where my uncle Terry had his bedroom when he was younger. And he was a big football fan, as lots of us are. And so when he was a kid, he had all of the NFL helmets stickered onto his door and they never got rid of it. It's still there to this day. The back door is full of NFL logos, NFL stickers. And when we were younger, my cousin Robert and I, who were very, very close in age, would think this was the coolest thing ever. And so we would run down the hallway, we'd look at the door and we go, I'm going to be this team. And then he'd go, I'm going to be this team. And then we go, okay, let's run down the hallway like we're those players and we're entering into the stadium and then we're going to play football in the living room. And then we'd do that for about two minutes and then we'd run back to the end of the hallway, we'd pick a new team and then we'd run back into the living room and we'd just go back and forth for hours playing this game and imitating football players because that's what we wanted to be. We wanted to be football players and we wanted to play like NFL players and sometimes we would even dress like football players. Should be up on the screen here in a second. There it is. <laughs> we wanted to be like the NFL players. We wanted to imitate the NFL players. That uh, my cousin Robert's on the left there, or I guess my right, your left. Um, and then I'm on the other side. So there you go. Why do I bring that up? Well, we all want to be something, especially when we're younger, we all look up to other people, right? We all look up to other people or other uh, things, or, or we watch movies, or we listen to music, or all those things, and we go, I want to be like that, right? When Michael Jordan was playing, they always had that phrase, I want to be like Mike, and they made a movie about it. Eh. Um, we all want to be like other people, so then we all want to imitate those people because we want to do the things they do. Or we want to be like the singers we listen to, so we try to be like them. We try to sound like them, or we practice really hard so we can play like them. Or we want to be a doctor, and so you play doctor as a kid, and you imitate a doctor as a kid, and as you go, then you go through the classes, and then you go through everything, and then you become a doctor. We imitate those things we want to be like. We imitate those things like we have in our life to use as examples. In um, the wonderful radio program, Adventures in Odyssey, if you've ever heard of it, it's a radio program by Focus on the Family that's been going on since 1987. Um, I've been listening to it since 1990 which was the year I was born, for those who haven't figured, or can't, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. I've been listening to it for a long time, and it's still going on to this day. But the, the main character in that radio program is a man named John Avery Whitaker, and he's this, like, wise, older gentleman who always gives advice to everybody. And I was listening to an episode recently, yes, I still listen to it, and he said this in the episode, and it honestly gave me the inspiration for this topic this morning. He said, imitating the right people can teach you how to live right. Imitating the right people can teach you how to live right. Well, who's the right people? Those in our life who point us to God. Because ultimately, what we want in our life is to be able to imitate Jesus. To imitate the one who came to this earth to show us how to live. To show us how to be people of integrity, to be people of love, to be people of grace, hope, and to be just good examples for those around us. We all imitate stuff. Like I said before, we imitate movies. I mean, how many people in here, maybe it is just me and that's okay, quote movie lines all the time right? I do it all the time. There's movies you've seen over and over again. You imitate it. You quote the line. Some of them I wish I didn't remember, but you know, you can't help that. 
we quote stuff, or we listen to music and we can recite the, ly the lyrics to a song. We're imitating that song. Everything that you can think of. There's somebody in your life right now that you are trying to live your life uh, like because they were an example to you growing up, good or bad. There's somebody in your life that you are trying to be like. Whether intentional or not even. Because they were an example to you and you are imitating them. We learn and we grow as children by mimicking the things we see. Right? Think about maybe you've had a child, you have a small child in your family, or maybe you can think back to when you were a child and how did we learn? We mimic the things we see. Parents are always, you know, talking to the children, mama, dad, dad, trying to get that, the child to mimic that so that they learn and they grow. And, and that's how we become who we are by those we've learned from. We need to be careful though. Because what we learn from, what we imitate, becomes who we are, like we said. And so if we are imitating things that are not good, that will reflect out of us. And if we imitate things that are good, that will also reflect out of us as well. And what does the Bible say about this? Right? Because ultimately, that's where we want to bring it back to. We want to bring it back to the scriptures. And Paul has some really, really good words in the scriptures about this. And Jesus does as well. Shocker, right? And I want to start in Ephesians 5. Just the first two verses of Ephesians 5. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me. And in my version, which um, is the NLT, the New Living Translation, it says this. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, ple uh, a pleasing aroma to God. It says it right there. You are his dear children. And like a child, we need to imitate our father. We need to imitate those who have gone before us so we can learn. And it says, imitate God. Imitate Christ. His example, because he loved us. Because he offered himself as a sacrifice. Because he did all these things while he was here on earth and he showed us how to live. Therefore, imitate Christ because that is the best way that we have to know how to live a right life. The best example we could have ever had is Jesus Christ. And in here, Paul is writing to Ephesus to encourage them to help them know how to live their lives opposite of the world and the culture of the time. You see, I, I read somewhere that at the time of this, they didn't have the New Testament, right? They didn't have the Gospels written to them. They didn't have it readily available. There were no Gideons back then to hand them out the New Testament, right? Because it didn't exist yet. What they had was people like Paul who would write letters to say, I saw this, I saw Christ, or, or I've heard firsthand accounts of what Christ did. Now let me tell you so that you know how to live rightly. And so when he writes this in, in Ephesians, when he writes to the, the church in Ephesus, he's saying, this is what I know because this is what I've seen, that this is how we need to live. He also writes to, to the church in Philippi, in Philippians. So um, if you want to keep turning, we'll go to Philippians now. And in Philippians chapter 2, we're going to read a little bit here, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Paul, again, is talking about this idea of imitating Christ, of having the same attitude that Christ has, and he's telling them exactly what that means. So read with me in chapter 2. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, Loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Here it is. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. In other words, you must imitate Christ. Though he was God... He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. 
Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth under earth heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now what he's not saying here is you need to have, you need to be just like Jesus and consider yourself to be God. No, it's not what he's saying. What he's saying is you should have a mind like Christ, right? We're not going to be perfect. We're human. We can't. But if we can try to be as close to Christ as we can, then we can do those things. It starts off with, don't think of ourselves as equal to God. We're not. As soon as we think we're equal to God, we end up being like Satan. That was his problem. He thought he could be equal to God, and then he thought he could be better than God. He's saying, no, don't do that. You're not equal to God. God is here. We are here. He says, humble ourselves, right? Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interests, but interests of others too. Care for other people, not just yourself. These are the things Christ did. And we have an example of it. That we can look at and go, if I want to really imitate Christ, I need to see what he's done. I need to see in his word the things he's done so I can try my best in my human form to do the best I can to be like him. We haven't, there's examples all over scripture, right? But one of, one of the ones I really, really like speaking on and sharing on, and honestly, when I was talking to Pastor Steve about what I wanted to preach on, this was also my other option. So you're getting a two for one today, uh, except the shorter version of this. But there's a wonderful example of Christ showing people how to live, right? Saying, look at what I'm about to do, and you want to imitate that. And it's in John 13. And it's this beautiful story of Jesus caring for his disciples in a way they would have never expected. Last week, Pastor Steve kind of talked about, I think it was last week, my weeks get jumbled up. But he, he talked about how the disciples would eat around the table, right? And that before they would get to the table, they had to wash their feet. And washing their feet was like the, the job of the servant of the house who was like on the lowest tier, right? The lowest of the low servant got the foot washing job. Nobody wanted that one. So if you were the new guy, you got the foot washing job. Why didn't they want it? Because it was dirty. It was gross. It was, you know, people walked around with sandals sometimes, barefoot most of the time. There weren't nice paved roads most of the time. So they were walking around in dirt. They didn't have nice cars. They had animals. Just think about that one for a minute. Things that they would have to walk around in. Their feet were dirty. So the lowest of the lowest job was to wash the feet as they would come in to sit down for dinner. And Christ, in this meeting together when they went to this dinner, was the head of the table. He was the guest of honor. And he could have easily been like, I'm the guest of honor. I'm going to sit here. You can wash my feet. We'll go about the dinner. But that's not what happens. When you, when you read through John 13, what happens is Christ says, okay, I'm going to take the mind of a servant, like it says in Philippians, I'm going to take the mind of the servant, and I'm going to serve those I love. It even goes on to say that he wanted to show them the full extent of his love. The full extent of God's love. Think about that for a second. The full extent of God's love was to serve those he loved. Was to serve those he cared about. We want to know what Christ was like. We read stories like this to know what he would do and how he treated others. And those he loved, he served. That even though he could have taken the, the spot of the head of the table and everybody would have been completely fine with that, he said, no, 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 I want to show you how much I actually love you. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to serve you. I want to read starting in verse 12 of John 13. Jesus' response, once all of it kind of ends, it's at the very end of it. And if you read the whole thing, like Peter has some really fun moments in there because he, he tends to have foot and mouthitis like I do. 
where he'll say stuff and Jesus is like, come on, Peter, we've talked about this, right? He has one of those moments where he's like, whoa, you're not going to wash my feet. You, you're not going to serve me. And Jesus is like, no, if I don't serve you and wash your feet, then you have nothing to do with me. Oh, scary. But after all of that happens, after the foot washing is complete, Jesus says these words. And again, it's this idea of where do we see that we need to imitate Christ? Right here, he's telling us in his own words. These are red letters in the Bible, if you have red letter Bibles. These are Jesus' actual words. Verse 12, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I, verse 15, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I mean, I could stop right there. That's my whole sermon in a sentence. Jesus says, do as I have done. Follow me. Imitate me. See what I did? Do that. Right? Jesus do or, or Jesus did, we do. I mean, we want to do what he says. We want to mimic Christ. We want to be like Christ. Paul says, imitate God. Imitate Christ. We want to know how to do that. We got to know him. You can't imitate something you don't know. I can't go off and imitate something I don't know. I see, I can't even think of something. Because it's something I don't know, but I couldn't. So let's say I went to an airport and they said, okay, we don't have a pilot for this plane. You got to sit in and pilot the plane. I couldn't do that. I can't imitate a pilot because I don't know how to be a pilot. It would go very, very badly. Honestly, it probably wouldn't because we wouldn't leave the gate because I wouldn't know how to turn the thing on. But the point is, is that we can't imitate things we don't know. If we want to imitate Christ, we have to know him. We have to know what he says. We have to know his words to us. And he shows this example to his disciples and he says, see what I just did? Go do that. Serve others as I have served you. Love others as I have loved you. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. But we want to imitate Christ. We got to know him and we got to do what he says. I want to read just a, a quick commentary on this one. As you, a lot of you know, if you've heard me preach before, I, I like to preach out of this NLT uh, application Bible, and they have some really, really good commentary in here. So I have a couple of them for you. But this first one comes off of this. It says, Jesus did not wash his disciples' feet just to get them to be nice to each other. His far greater goal was to extend his mission on earth after he was gone. These men were to move into the world serving God, serving each other, and serving all people whom they took the message of salvation. Christ doesn't do this stuff to say, okay, cool, you know it. You can just sit where you are. He says, look at what I'm doing. Now go do it. Go out and show others how to love the way I have loved you. Imitate me. Now, it can seem very intimidating to try to think of imitating Christ perfectly, right? How can we as humans who are, uh, you know, flawed and sinful, imitate a perfect God? Well, Paul kind of gives us an out a little bit. He gives us not, not a full excuse, it's not an excuse, but he gives us an out of, in a way. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, and it goes to 11, 1, which is weird in my Bible because like it doesn't have the big 11 there. It's one paragraph and then they move into 11. It's weird. But um, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, which was read for us a little bit earlier, earlier, it says again, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Don't give offense to the Jews or the Gentiles or the church of God. I too, again, this is Paul writing, I too try to please everyone in everything I do. I don't just do what is best for me. I do what is best for others so many may be saved. And you should imitate me as I imitate Christ. What Paul is saying here is, it, 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 what I think he's saying here is, I get it. We're all sinful people. We're not perfect. We're not perfect like Christ was. 
But what he's saying is, I'm trying my best to live the life that Christ wants me to live, to, to be following Christ the way, the best I know how. And so if you want to imitate me as a flawed human who's doing my best to imitate Christ, then that's okay too. See what I'm doing. Read my words. Do your best to follow me as I follow Christ. He's not saying follow me because I am Christ. That would be a whole different discussion, and we probably wouldn't have that. Hopefully not. What he is saying is, follow me as I follow Christ. Look at what I'm doing, again, as a flawed human, knowing that I am doing my best to follow Christ. Again, one more commentary for you on this one. It says, why did Paul say, imitate me? Paul wasn't being arrogant. He did not think of himself as sinless. At this time, however, the Corinth believers did not know much about the life and ministry of Christ. Paul could not tell them to imitate Jesus because the Gospels had not yet been written. So they did not know what Jesus was like. The best way to point these new Christians to Christ was to point them to a Christian whom they trusted. So I ask you this question. Do you have someone in your life who you trust who is doing their best to follow Christ, to imitate Christ, so that you can follow their example. But then I also twist it on you. Oh, sorry. No, back up for a second. So do you have that person? We all have people in our life who reflect Christ very well. You can think about it. If we can try to be like them, use their example then we can try to live our life like Christ as well. So I want you to just take 30 seconds. I'm going to do a very youth ministry thing here. So just bear with me for a second. But I want you to take 30 seconds. I want you to think about in your life, who is that person? Who was that person? Who currently is that person? Who helps you to see how to live like Christ? Who is a good example for you of how to live like Christ? I want you to take 30 seconds right now, and if you want to think about it, or if you want to share with your neighbor, you may do that. But just think about who is that person that comes to mind when you think of imitating them because they are living a life like Christ. Go ahead. For me, when I think about this, I have so many examples that come through my head. But there's two I want to share because I know they're probably going to watch this later. <laughs> Their names are mom and dad. <laughs> yes, not your mom and dad, my mom. No. Um, and there's two, two reasons I say this. One, for my mother who gives the example of how to just make sure that every day you start your day off in the right way. If she wakes up early, she'll read her Bible never really tells us she's doing it, right? She's not boastful about it at all. She just goes about her business, but then leads in that way of saying, this is my example to follow, that you want to start your day, you want to make sure that your day includes reading your word and knowing who Christ is. And my, and my father, in a different way, I like to tell this story, and, you know, my parents were both teachers. Uh, they just recently retired, but they were both teachers, and we had a rule that if they ever used us, my sister and I, in examples in their classroom, that they owed us a quarter. Um, pastors, kids have the same thing. But uh, this is my way of getting back at them because I can now use them as examples. So I can take a quarter off. Um, but one of my favorite stories to think about, when I interned at Lake Beauty, which was in 2011, uh, we would get together with other camps for the burger flips and the different... Uh, uh, events that the different camps got together for. And the interns, each camp kind of had their set of interns, and we would all kind of hang out because we're like, we're all interns together, woo. Um, yeah, the woo would actually happen. Um, one of the interns from Camp Shamanah 
we were talking one time in a van ride. We were going up to uh, Adventures Christian, so it was a, or not uh, up that way. So it was a long car ride, and uh, one of the, the guys, he and I started talking, and we realized that he had my dad as a teacher. Like, my dad was his sixth grade teacher. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. He goes, yeah, I thought that was really cool. And then he says these words. I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to forget this one. He looks at me, he goes, you know, I always knew your dad was a Christian. Like, he never could say it because he taught in public school, but I could just tell because the way that he was and the way that he would treat us. You see, he wouldn't always say stuff, but the way he acted showed people that he was trying to reflect Christ. Some of you out there are thinking, I'm not great with my words. I'm not great with trying to share with people talking. You know, I, the Gideon thing would be really hard for me to do. But if we really want to be like Christ, if we really want to imitate him, we don't really necessarily have to say anything. Our attitude, how we live, how we respond to things, how we respond to good things and bad things, our reactions to things, when people are being really, uh, are frustrating us, we can reflect Christ in our reactions to things. And this, this guy, I think his name was Corey, knew that my dad was a Christian, not because of things he would say, because it was a public school in the cities, so he definitely wasn't allowed to say anything, but because of his actions and how he treated his students. And how he reacted in the hard times and in the good times. When he was frustrated, when he wasn't. How can we do that to this day? Even if you don't feel like sharing with words, how can we still be reflecting Christ even through our actions? Mimicking Christ and his love even through our actions. You see, we want to be a reflection of Christ and we want our, to do our best. But the other thing we have to think about is that people are also going to imitate us. It's the other side of the coin, right? We got to think of who we're imitating, but we also have to remember that people are also imitating us. So who are we? Who are, how are we living so that if somebody is going to imitate us, what would that look like? I really wanted to uh, start the sermon off today. It didn't work out, uh, but I really want to start the sermon off with somebody doing an imitation of me. Because I thought that would be funny. Uh, I, I asked Shane. I was like, Shane, you should go up there. We'll dress alike. You should go up there and be like, hi, I'm Zach. It's time for the sermon. And then unfortunately, camp got busy and that's okay. But I just think that would have been really funny. But if you think about that, if you ask somebody to do an impression of you, what would they do? What would they say? How would they act? I'm scared to know what someone would do an impression of me of. I really am. I don't know. Got a lot of crazy things going on up here. But we have to be really careful because not only is it us being imitations of Christ, but we are also being looked at as somebody that somebody wants to follow. Maybe you have little kids. Maybe you've had little kids. Maybe you work with kids. Maybe you work with other people. And you're like, yeah, these people look at me and, and I'm kind of their, the leader or I'm, I'm the person they follow. We need to remember that whatever we do, other people are going to probably want to do as well or follow us, that other people are Im imitating us as well. And so if we are imitating Christ, then they can look at us and that's a good thing. But if we're imitating other stuff, that could be scarier for what they're following. There's a, a country music artist Oh no, he's going to talk about country music. Yes, I am. There's a country music artist named Rodney Atkins. He has a song came out a while ago called I've Been Watching You. And it's, a, it's honestly a really good song. So if you just need a good song to listen to, it's a good one. Um, but the story of the song is this idea that he is a dad of a young son. And uh, they're driving down the road and, and they hit a bump or whatever. And the young son's McDonald's flies out of his lap. And it goes all over the car, and the young son says a word that he probably shouldn't have said. And the dad looks at him and goes, why did you say that word? And the chorus of the song, I'm going to just read it, because I don't have the good like country twang voice. I'm too much of a, 
of a northerner. No, um, it says this. He said, I've been watching you, Dad. Ain't that cool? I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you and eat all my food and grow as tall as you are. We got cowboy boots and camel pants. Yeah, we're just alike, ain't we, Dad? I want to do everything you do, so I've been watching you. There are people in our lives who look up to us, no matter who we are. And they want to be like us. Are we setting a good example for them? The song goes on. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that fun of country songs is there's always a nice story that goes through them. The story of the song goes on. And the dad looks in on his son's room at the, at the, in the evening. And his son is praying on his knees. And he says, where did you learn to pray like that? And that's when the chorus comes back in. I've been watching you. Ain't that cool? You see, people are watching us. Are we setting a good example? Are we setting a bad example? Who are we imitating so that others can imitate us? That's your question of the day. Look at your life and go, who am I imitating so that when other people look at me, who do they see? Are we that mirror of Christ? When, when people look in the mirror, are they seeing Christ? Or are they seeing something else? We want to be the reflection, the imitation of the one true God. Amen. Now we're going to move nicely as we think about being the imitation of the one true God. We want to do the things he's done, the things he's shown us, the examples he's given us into the table, into the communion table where we focus on something. table he ate with his his friends with his disciples and it all comes down to the the last supper when he says look at this i'm going to give you an example and i want you to follow that example and we still have that to this day and before i get started here i just want to say for us at this church we believe in holy communion but we are open if you are a believer of christ no matter if you're a member of this church or not, if you are a believer in Christ and you have that relationship with him, you are invited to the table this morning. Because this is for those who have that relationship, for those who believe in Christ, want to remember what he has done for us on the cross. We come together this morning to the table.